not going right. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Sweet Machine Channel. Today, we're on this beautiful 19, I believe, 59 case tractor, 300. Technically, it's a 300B. Technically, it's a 311B for the fan boys out there. Uh, I was told it was ran when parked. I've heard that one before. Was told that it was running pretty good. The previous owners had got it tuned up pretty good, but it had an overheating problem, which is why they parked it. So. We're gonna go ahead and I'll give you the grand tour of this thing and uh, we'll go ahead and then we'll start opening it up and see what we got and uh, see if we can get her going again. I really like that emblem. I mean, that's, they don't make tractors with these emblems anymore, these medallions. <laughs> I'm also really impressed that the, the glass is actually all here. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, but it's not cracked or broken in any way. The gauges look severely faded, but I'm really quite surprised that glass is in one piece. Sweet. Since I'm up here, battery tray. Okay, that's really nice. We got my visitors uh, once upon a time, so that's good to know. And since I'm up here, I guess we'll take a look at our gas. It's completely empty. You guys probably won't be able to see anything. Completely empty. And it looks like the pickup screen's full of rust and stuff. Nice. All right, well, let's take a look at the water. Oh, that's, I can't, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a little bit of sloshing going on in there. And so there is a skosh of water in there. This means the head gaskets might still be intact. Not all of the water has gone to the block, engine block bottom of the oil pan, so that's a good thing. So that's the top side view. Come around here. It's got the, uh, oh, it's got the original toolbox on it. Woo! Nests. Oh, oh, there's one there. Okay, we're gonna leave you alone. Uh, engine oil should be here. No, that's that's pretty good actually. It, I can still see, I can still see, uh, a little bit of color in it so it's not completely not completely dark so that's a, another good sign um one thing i forgot to check is the throttle linkage uh, throttle linkage where the car works on this side does it work up here on the dashboard no oh geez no it's frozen up solid so i have to work on a throttle lever all righty and, um, oof, they're really not holding any air, are they? Okay, well, I think she'd sit on her rims. Whoa, yeah, she's, she's sitting on her rim. So we're gonna have a fun time pumping that up. That's gonna take an hour and a half. <laughs> and of course, the bucket. Not just your standard bucket, but it's got the, well, I don't know, the manure or the straw forks on it, so you can pick up hay or silage or whatnot, wherever you're feeding your cows or whatnot. So the first order of business is pretty much getting all this tin off, get into the actual engine, start poking around, make sure at least it turns over by hand, and then we'll start walking through the systems, you know, fuel spark and such and such on there for of. So, let me go grab some tools, we'll start taking off some bolts. Well... There's the old battery tray. What's left of it? <laughs> Got the engine a little bit more exposed now. Fortunately, the throttle is not stuck on the carburetor. This here rod actuates the whole thing. So that's not frozen. That's a good sign. Choke is also not frozen. Choke moves, so that's a good sign. We'll work on the throttle linkage later, but that's a good sign to see the carburetor's not frozen at Before least. Before I take the front part clip off, I want to actually put a battery on it and see if this thing will spin over. We'll take the spark plugs out first and see if it makes enough noise. See if it does make any noise. Using the latest technology for labeling your spark plug wires, 
we will label all of our wires here with the corresponding spark plugs. Because I don't have a service manual for this yet. There you go. Marked spark plug number one. A little bit of carbon, but it actually looks pretty good. I might have some old vintage champions. Let's go home and take a look. Well, cylinder number two looks, looks pretty good. I'm gonna call the cylinder number one because the forward, most forward cylinder. I think that's how it works. Pretty dry, actually. That looks pretty gosh darn good. Looks all right. This is a good sign. Number three. Again, a little bit of carbon, but pretty gosh darn clean. I was told that it's possibly had a tune-up before it was parked. So they had it running really good. So I think, I think it might just be all right. Oof, except for four. Yeah. Of course it's the last one. Ouch. Oof. Don't snap. Come on, baby. Oh, good. This one's putting up a little bit more of a fight. I'm getting nervous about this one. Number four. Again, it looks really good. Just a bit of carbon buildup, but... That looks very good. Okay, so she's in neutral. Let's go ahead and gently put the ground on and make sure it doesn't nothing catch on fire, I hope. All right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Easy. Let's get some diesel in them cylinders. Okay. I'll well, crank it over a little bit. spin again should have grounded out the coil forgot about that shoot that's how you burn up coils make sure you don't plug them or you're grounding them out if you're not using the spark plugs cranking again all right let's do it one more time then we can pull a compression test Okay. Be the third or fourth time with diesel re-oiling everything. Boy, it's spinning nicely. Compression test number four cylinder. Number four, 150 PSI. That's a strong cylinder. Of course, this is wet. So, it might go down a little bit, but so far, so good. I'll get it to start. Hopefully, our other three are somewhat intact. Hundred and fifty as well. Something wrong with my check valve, it won't stay. Oh well. Cylinder that was cylinder three, cylinder two. Oh 
like almost 160. Nice. That one's about 150. That's good. Hundred and fifty. This is a strong motor. Wow. All four cylinders have about 150 PSI wet across all four of them. Which means we got a really good motor here. Excellent. I don't have to worry about the bottom end. This thing is gonna get going again. I'm getting excited. Our first tractor resurrection episode. Fantastic. Right. Alright, so let's just see if the coil has any power. The coil has power. Okay, well, maybe this is one of the easier videos I can tape. <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic. All right, guys, let me go ahead and I'm going to get this nose off of here. And uh, we'll resume when I get this thing off. All right. Guess we got to pull the radiator next so we can get to that fan. Ooh. Good thing is, it does still smell a little bit of antifreeze, and it's actually starting to turn a little bit green. Well, that's a good thing, actually. Let's see if we can zoom you guys in. I have unlocked turbo speed now for the drain. Yes. Okay, well, that was pretty. Fascinating. Let's go ahead and put this guy right back in here before I forget it. Okay. Bing! Wow. That must be all that stainless steel or galvanized or offer must be newer. One radiator out. Oh, it looks pretty good. Nothing terrible there. No major cracks. If I go ahead and use it again. Fan off. Pulley. It's probably going to be stuck on there. left in that can. There we go. Thank you. Pulling off the water pump now. Bearing. It's it's tight. It's tight. Okay. That actually looks pretty good. Yeah, honestly, it feels pretty good. I mean, there's no water leaking from it. The bearing's still tight on it. Might put a new one on since I'm deep in here anyways because I really, really don't want to come back in here and do this later during midsummer in case this thing does start leaking, in case this thing's dried up a little too much. So maybe put this on the shelf for a to save. Excellent. All right, so a couple of weeks later, I've got a box full of parts. Let's go ahead and put the water pump on and the radiator back on and get everything buttoned up. We'll keep the hood off so we don't have to worry about if we have to go back into it later. We're just going to run with the engine uh, put off. So let's go ahead and install some new parts now. There we go. Get the never sees here. Our car might bolt 
tightening device. Click, 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 tool tight. Old belt back on because my new belt I bought apparently is too gosh darn small. Right, nothing but problems, like I says. That's how we roll. This belt looks like good enough, it'll be all right. At least for the initial run up. All right, so thermostat, springy thingy in me down here. That's all it is. It pretty much just sets right in there and the hose here just wraps around and holds it tight. I don't really particularly care for that design, but it'll work. If you guys have a hard time getting your hose over the hose barb here, spray it with some penetrating oil. It does the hose good. In there right shiny new hose clamps on well maybe the other way hose clamp number two on excellent all right let's go ahead and put some plain water in it number one when we get started I lost a check for leaks. Number two, we got all the rust and everything suspended back in the water, dump that, and then we can put clean antifreeze in. Water's pretty cheap compared to antifreeze, so let's fill this up. Make sure it doesn't leak. Oy. That continues to gurgle and everything. Let's go ahead and get some wires and spark plugs replaced. All right. Yeah, they look like they're gapped good enough. Forgot my gap gauge, but just eyeballing it. Yeah, sure, why not? That'll be fine. Oh, the sun's gonna come out. That's brilliant. We we'll have to sort these out once we figure out what all sizes we have here. That should work there. That work here. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. It's fine. Okay, there we go. All right, so we got the water all in there. I'll give that another top off. Wiring for our ignition system's all good. Haven't bothered taking the distributor, but let's have some fun and just ignore that. So let's go ahead and focus on the fuel and the throttle linkage. We're getting closer, people. We're getting closer. Fantastic. This is our fuel bowl right here. I'm going to take the glass off. And what I have are these guys. It's a fine, what was that, copper mesh screen. We'll sit right on top of here, collect the biggest chunks that come out from the fuel tank. I also got a new cork gasket because I don't know how old that one is. Being 10 years dry, it's probably all crusted up. Just trying to prevent stuff. <laughs> from uh, having any more problems so we can get this thing show on the road. So let's go ahead and drain that bowl. Let's get some uh, new parts installed on it. Get the rest of this varnish or whatever is in here out of here. 
There we go. Yeah. It's a little on the varnish side. A little bit of kerosene. It's all right. <laughs> Oof. Oh, gosh. Oh, it smells like paint then. Let me show you guys what that mesh looks like. Uh, that's what the mesh screen is for. I figure it'd be good just in case if there's some big chunks, it doesn't overwhelm the bowl and shoot it into the carburetor. So we'll see if this mod works. Put my used gasket up in here because apparently my part boys need some discipline. <laughs> I will have words with them later. Don't you worry about that. Made me look bad in front of my two viewers. There we go. Just barely. It'll probably leak anyways. All right. All right. That should be good enough for at least a start up. Go ahead and turn our fuel bowl on. This time, hopefully, the framing and focus are in order. Oh, she's trickling. That's good. Right, so now it's time to work on our throttle linkage. Now this is a choke, and this is the throttle. You see we got plenty of springy action, so we know the carburetor's not frozen, but the linkage is. Let's check the other side. So over here, when it comes around here, Still got some movement here. Once we come back to here, I think this piece is frozen. This is, goes to the throttle. It's not completely frozen. This goes to your foot throttle right here. Zoom, 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 right? So we, know the, we know the foot throttle's engaged, so we can see we press it down, and it's uh, it's pretty well open. So this thing's probably frozen. I don't know, half, three quarters. I don't know how. So I'm just gonna start banging on this and lubing this up and see if we can't get our shaft to start moving because that's locked up tight, or pretty locked up tight. Let's go ahead and start banging on some stuff and throw some more oil around. Poor girls has been sitting too long. Poor old thing. Whew. Wow, might let that soak in for another couple of days. It's better. At least it's broken loose. That's better. We will have some control. Well, okay, this is it, I guess. Let's see what happens. Neutral, clutch, there's something there. Choke, one quarter inch throttle, there we go. I smell gas.
So that's supposed to be our hot wire. And this is our control wire as removes and adds removes the ground. So this one should be flashing. And it's completely solid. Which means we're not getting an impulse from the distributor. The one thing I didn't check. Brilliant. No. Oh. That's a brand new cap. That's really brand new. Mmm. There's the cutest little rotor that you'll ever see. Okay. So all it was is the points just simply needed cleaning. So now, if we look and listen, hear that? And you see the test light there? Now we know it goes on and off, on and off, on and off. I don't know if you can see it, but you should be able to at least hear a little popping sound. That's the coil lighting off now. So all I did was got in there with the file with my Leatherman and just went shh, 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 right quick. So now it should light off. Huh, famous last words. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> ah. seems stuck I can't seem to drop it into gear and the main hoist doesn't want to seem to work which could be low on hydraulic fluid so let me take a look and I'll let you know what I find out well I think I know the reason why it's locking us out you pull on this it's going against our bump stop here versus if you have full throw this way so let's go ahead and just take this off here right quick Handy dandy toolbox. Woo! -hoo -hoo. It's got a live bee in it. There we go. Now we got some thrill. 
Now let's try it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the clutch, figure out why I wasn't going forward and backwards. Now, for you guys that might be following along, for the one person that might be still following along, bless you. <laughs> uh, these tractors have two clutches. Number one, you have your traditional dry clutch bolted up to your flywheel like any, under, like any standard you know, old school car. It's nothing terribly fancy. This is goes to your foot control. I can get grass out of here. So that's your dry clutch. It's made up to your flywheel and it operates, is operated by your foot clutch here. Okay? Like that. Now, this is your hand lever for the wet clutch that this thing has. There's actually a clutch pack in here. And we have an old case out at the farm and I know that it takes a considerable amount of pressure to lock it in. This thing is so loose, I literally can lock it into place with just my pinky. There's supposed to be about 50 pounds of force you're supposed to have to apply to keep this thing locked in. So, with this, it tells me that this thing is not in spec. So we gotta adjust the wet clutch and get this thing back into spec. Try to keep this side and this side clean because you will be going inside a gearbox here guys so FYI right does this thing have to be new I think it'd be neutral oh great <laughs> oh that's wonderful well there goes that High and low and drive. Ah, that should be fine. Aha. Yay! It's a bit better. After beating on that for half an hour. Yep, that'd be a gearbox. All right, let me show you guys what exactly is going on underneath there, or try to. All right, so here's inside of the gearbox. There's your wet clutch hub all the way back in there. That'd be that guy way back in there. This is part of the lever actuation. So if I actuate our lever over here, that's how the clutch engages and disengages for the wet clutch at least. Now, going zooming in even further, there's two dowel pins. Now, taking an even closer look, there's a dowel pin here, a dowel pin right there. I'll let the camera refocus. There's one right, you can see one of them right there, the other one's right across from each other. I basically have to push one of those in, or pull it, I can't remember, to unlock it. Then I simply have to rotate input shaft here. Uh, I think it's counterclockwise to tighten it and clockwise to loosen it. So we're going with tightening. So that's basically what's going on, guys. I'm sorry I can't zoom in too terribly well, but you can see those pins a little bit clearer, possibly. Um, I basically have to mess around with those, push them in and out to unlock it, and then basically they will self-lock once I give it a few clicks. It might turn two or three clicks. Also to note, that this transmission is about half empty. This thing needs a heck of a lot more hydraulic fluid, that's for sure, so we'll have to give her a top off in the end, but let's go ahead and adjust that wet clutch at the very least and see if we can get a working transmission again. All right, need about a good three or four clicks in. Let's see where that lands us. 
Oh yeah. Oh, that's so tight I can't engage it now. I cannot. So I got a little too tight with it. It's all right, we can back it off. That didn't take much tightening though. There we go. That should be how it should be. That's a lot more positive. Let's try this again, again. So, the wet clutch was adjusted enough that it was working. It was out of spec, but it feels like it's in spec now. It's a little bit harder to push in. What was happening is my clutch linkage wasn't getting fully released. So, this pedal had too much slop in it. If we can see right here, looks like we got an old grease dirt here. It hasn't seen grease in a very long time. So we're definitely going to put a lot of penetrating oil on this, get all this cleaned up. So basically the dry, the dry clutch wasn't fully engaging in the flywheel. So now it engages, this thing rocks. I have to go back to the shop, grab my generator and air compressor so we can pump up this dead tire. And now that we know it's going to rock and roll, pump up the tire, fill up the hydraulic reservoir, do an oil change on it. We should be about be good to go. All right, so, first of all, dropping of the 710 fluid. With associated grass in it too, yes. Yay! 
cool. We didn't ruin the oil pan this time. Ha! Okay. Is there a gasket? I don't see a gasket. Crush washer, excuse me. It doesn't look too bad. Oh, I think I gotta punch it again. I don't wanna. Oh. Okay, pull. There we are. We can let go of my screwdriver. Well. Thank you. Ah, let's see if we can get away with hand tie only. Ha! Yeah, right. Doing my luck. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Absolutely marvelous. Next, we add the coolant. Now add the water. It's a hot day outside. Pinch them off for yourself. That's better. I can't be full yet. Wait for it to glug, glug, glug. All right, let's see where that gets us. Not even on the board yet. That's wonderful. This might take 6,000 gallons. Oh, let's just pour the whole thing in, eh? Now, where are we at? <laughs> We're just up on the low mark. <laughs> uh, I forget, bring out an extra gallon. 
Yep, it's just at the low mark. Alrighty, well, that's good enough to run. Technically, this tractor is sloped down, so close enough to run. So now let's go ahead and get our clutch pivot joint lubed up and corrected. Feels like it wants to work now, but we're gonna go ahead and take that grease arc off and, and or clean it up properly. Can't wait to get this thing out of this stupid grass. Where's my thumb thumb? There it is. Pump it, pump it. We're going to pump you up. Come on, no vapor, liquid, there we go. That feels like an actual clutch now. It actually has springy backy on it. Sitting for 10 years, it's gonna take a little bit to get her working out again, but I'll go ahead and get a grease gun and zip, do a little bit of zipping on that right quick. She got a little bit to go yet, but we're getting there. Let me go get a grease gun. Okay. Oh, I took it. All right, very good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. I'm going to make sure the coolant level, when it's after it's warm, get where it's supposed to be. Go ahead and spray down the rams, extend them out, get them nice and lubed up with some oil, penetrating oil, get everything nice and loose again, and uh, we're about ready to put her back to work. Stick around for that. right oh goody well, I think that tube's done <laughs> We're able to pump it up enough, we can probably at least wheel this thing around. I had thoughts about maybe mowing with this thing, but this thing is not going to take too long to air down and go flat again. So, at the very least, let's just at least drive this thing around and um, do a little putt putting with it while we still have some air. 
Nothing but problems? Yep, that's true. Always on this channel. I tell you.
All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, it was fun getting this thing going. It took a few more knobs and twists and turns, but we got it going, and the tire's still leaking, so uh, we're gonna have to fix that, but we'll fix offline. I was hoping to mow it, but instead, well, we were able to use a front end loader, at least for a few fun things, so uh, very handy to have around the back 40, that's for sure. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Appreciate it. We'll see you internet people really soon. This is a Swedish Meatball, signing off. It, uh, I don't know. Oh, alrighty then, so. Oh, really, I just, I, yeah. See how it's easier bolts come off when you use the right thread pitch? Now just, oh, easy guys. Hello? All right, so the key's on. Just for fun, let's see if the coil has any ignition. <laughs> Take that again. I'm gonna go ahead and button up the bottom of the radiator. Dump some oil in it. Yeah, we're gonna dump oil in it. Ah. <sighs> Really want to go for this big screen mesh I just put up in here because in case there's humongous chunks coming down in here, I'll catch most of it. I don't have to worry about it getting sucked up in the um, uh, in the intake that goes to the wow. Oh no, she's leaking out of the bowl. I I'm gonna have to sort this one out. I can't even see if I'm in the frame or not. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Do we have enough wind? Am I yelling loud enough? Oh, it's on normal. Ooh, it's getting windy out here. Can we turn off the fan just for a bit, please? You're still leaking. Hey, knock it off. Hey, you, knock it off. Next week, we're gonna install air conditioning on it. <laughs>